Got a great beer here today. Did you ever have a Sam Adams? Really good beer. Interesting story about this uh, about this beer. Um, supposedly, it was found by uh, the founders, uh, um, a descendant of the founder in the attic or something, and they found the recipe and real success story. And uh, they started making this brew, and um, they went around and started just selling it literally door to door to all the breweries, and and it. It's become a, a really, it's an excellent, it's an excellent lager. It's a nice tasting beer. I haven't had it for a long time. 5.0% uh, alcohol. Um, while we're getting started here, um, why don't we, um, I have a video I want to show you, okay? Let's do, let me go to that right now. I always like to start off with a video and then we'll come back here, have some beer, uh, talk about the life of a salesman, okay? I'll see you in a few. I'll see you back. It's a short video. I always like to show some of my videos. I've, I've, literally uh, over a thousand videos now on YouTube. I think we'll talk a little bit about marketing too. Okay, and so let's go to here. Let's go to here. I'm gonna go right to this video here, and there we go. He don't want to do the work. He just want to be. It's not a little bit of work. It's a lot of work. It's hustle, man. Right, right. I'm here on this desk every day, eight days a week. I hustle. I don't have to hustle anymore, and I still hustle. That's what's right. I could have retired awesome. a long time ago. I don't want to retire. I love my job. I love what I do. You don't quit when you love. I, lo I love the challenge. I like making money. Uh, I like turk. I like turk turning chicken shit into chicken salad all day long. You know. How do you keep up with all? Because I know you probably get swamped with leads. How do you keep up with all that? Hey, hey three minute. I don't have it. I packed my three minute timer. Shame on me. Um, I qualify real quick. I use guts to sell guts. Okay. I get on the phone. Someone calls me up. Hi, Mr. Diamond. Saw your videos and everything. But go ahead. Call me up. You're, you're the guy who wants to. Hey, come on. I've I seen all your videos, man. I've I'm, been I'm really impressed, man. I, oh, I like thank it. Thank you. Stroke. So flattery will get you everywhere. Your name, sir? Oh, my name is Armand. Armand, thank you for calling. I got your phone number on your caller ID here. Tell me how you and I can do business today. Why are we talking? Oh, man, I, I mean, I'm really impressed with all the videos and everything. I, I mean, I, I, just, I just like your creativity. I, I mean, I, I just I like to get started in that. What do you mean get started? Well, I mean, I like to get started in your program, man. I mean, I, I got this job, man. I hate this thinking job. I just I want to get started in your program so I can make some make some money. Uh, OK, you re and that's something you want to do when? Oh man, I want to do that like yesterday, man. I mean, I, okay. You mind I'm if ready. we talk? You mind if we talk about money? Oh sure, let's talk about money. How much my, money my can I make? My starting program is fifteen thousand dollars. It's a great deal of money. A lot of people can't work with me because of financial constraints. Uh, so, is, is that going to be comfortable for your budget today? Fifteen thousand dollars. A lot of money. Wow. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah, a lot of people they say you know nine ninety seven or you know five hundred dollars. Oh, good. If you found somebody for that much money, you should call them. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I, I like, like I it's like, over. Uh, well, I like what you have. I mean, uh, I mean, your but your, not your 15, style of but you don't like it for fifteen thousand. You don't like fifteen thousand dollars worth, do you? Oh man, I was. I, hey, if I had it, I definitely, I would love it. It sounds like it's over, sir. And you've been a gentleman. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. Now that it's over, can I ask you one last question before I go? Sure. Um, if the money wasn't an issue, you wouldn't want to work with me, would you? Oh man, if the money wasn't a problem, I would love to work with you. You sure you wouldn't have to talk to your wife or or go light a candle in church or something first? Ah uh, no, man, I wouldn't have to do anything sure. like that, man. Uh, if the money wasn't a problem, I'm all in. Suppose I made you an offer you couldn't refuse, and you have to get back to me before four thirty today. Would you want me to make that offer? Sure, yeah. Okay, if you can get back to me with a reasonable payment plan, something substantial down today. And something per month. I'll I'll work with you. Can you do that? Would you want to do that, sir? If I was willing to make that kind of a crazy offer, substantial down and a monthly plan. Um, I mean, you know, you were at fifteen thousand. Uh, what do you? I mean, substantial to me and substantial to you is two different things. Well, you're gonna have to find out, right? In order to go fishing, you gotta get a you gotta put a pole in the water, sir. Right. You can uh, say that, and it's okay to say no to me. God bless me. God bless you too. And you can go ahead and go to uh, go go to those guys for ninety seven dollars. There's some good people out there. Will do it for ninety seven. I charge 15, <laughs> I charge fifteen. Okay. 
Well, I, I get back with you with offer. I mean, I definitely would get back with you with offer. What time? Um, let's see. It's uh, about one thirty right now. I, I give you a call here. Just uh, give me about an hour. I get right back with you. Yeah, I can't do it in an hour. Can you make it ninety minutes? Ninety minutes? Yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit over hour. I mean, that's, that's fine. Yeah, sure. We'll talk to you in 90 minutes. So you have a great day. Look forward to your call. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks. I like it. I like it. That's the difference between $97 and $15,000. <laughs> guts. It's guts, man. It's all psychology. It's understanding behavior. It's not bullying the guy. It's not begging the guy. Say, hey, look, I'm busy. There's a reason why people pay me more money than some, maybe some other guys. And maybe you should work with those. See, I didn't bad mouth them or anything. Go to those guys. Work to them. Then I, I fired you. Then I brought you back in. I said, would you be, listen, if money wasn't an issue, you wouldn't want to work with me. Oh, yeah. And then you got all excited and emotional again. I had your attention. Right. And then I get, then I put the, then I didn't change my price, but I changed the terms. And I made you come back to me with an offer and a commitment on a time frame. Why are we in business? To make money today. Today, operative word, today. Why, what do we sell? We sell solutions. And we do not give presentations. No, pre did I give you a presentation? No. Hi, we're going to work this much and that. And I didn't give you any of that. Do you realize that you can sell somebody emotionally in the first second? In, in, this is the million dollar rule that I keep teaching people. You see the guy on the sign with the four kids on the street and it says, I lost my job. My kids are hungry. Make you want to go in your pocket. I'm blind. It's a beautiful day. I wish I could see it. Please help me. Right. Oh, I mean, come on. Okay. Let's stop that. Let's get out of there. Stop sharing. And we're back here. And hello, everybody. Oh, we got some comments already here. Somebody's here. Let's get rid of this thing. Excuse me. And we're going to have a little more beer here. We're going to talk about, there was a lot of things in that video, a lot of stuff about sales. Sales is psychology. It's also being a thespian, a good actor. We'll talk a little bit about that today. Hello, everybody. Oh, let's see who's here. Don is here. Hey, uh, Dan is here. Love it. Great idea. See you there. Uh, no cores, the humanity. Um, yeah, Kenny. No, we don't have course today. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a little Sam Adams here. Uh, Leon is gonna be there. Jim Rohrbeck. Oh my gosh, my old, this man. I'd like to have him come on here a little bit. Looks like you're following Dr. John Bluter Bludowski's of advice. Okay, that's um. I think that's from Animal House. If I'm uh, reading him correctly, there he is. Hey, Uncle Claude. Hey, Aaron. Sean Osby. Hey, Sean, how's things in beautiful? Uh, Omaha, Nebraska. By the way, if anybody wants to join me, um, here is the link. I posted it in there. You guys are more than welcome to join me and come on if you'd like. Um, have a beer with me. Join in the discussion. Ask questions, too, by the way. You post it in there. Let's have a little uh, Boston lager here. Uh, we travel to Bavaria to hand select the wonderful hops from the high American plains. Okay, let's have some beer here first. This is um, John Adam. First of all, oh, look at that color. Oh, God, is that beautiful? This is a good old Sam Adams here. And, um, oh, that is just beautiful. Look at that. That is just a beautiful color there. Oh, nice head, too. It's not disappearing. Very effervescent. Mmm, rich. There's a I'm getting a little smell of coffee, a little smell, coffee smell there. It's only a lager too, but it's uh, it's such a full flavored lager. Um, you know what I like that they also have on there? They have a, a freshness label. Let's see if I can put this on here. I don't know if you can see it. And they, you also, beer has a shelf life. Did you know that? Um, all beer tastes stale and musky. Sometimes you ever get a beer taste like that? Um, this is a fresh beer. This beer is made April 2020. I like that. Um, let me show you that again here because I didn't do a very good job there. Look at that. There's a little dot there. Can you see that? It says April 2020. Let's you know it's fresh. Sometimes beer, beer when beer sits too long, and this was in the, um, the liquor store we went into today, fully masked, okay, gloves and everything. Um, it was in the refrigerator. I do not believe, okay, going to get controversial here. I don't believe beer sitting on a store shelf for days, week, months is, is 
I think beer should be kept cold. It should be fresh. Just my opinion here. So to you guys, oh, it smells wonderful. It's got a great, great head to it. Salute, Laheim. Hope everything's going well for you in your world. That is good beer. Wow, that is quality. That is not a Budweiser. Okay, that is just a excellent, rich, full-bodied, uh, it's full flavor. Not overpowering, but it's not like a Coors. It's not like a Budweiser. I mean, it. This thing has flavor, uh, and it's it, It's just a. It's called a Boston Lager, Sam Adams. This is just one good beer. Hmm. Let's talk about a few things here. Oh, by the way, here, I've got a gift for you. Would you guys like a gift? Would you like something for free? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. No? I have a, I'm going to talk a little bit. This is a book I wrote. It's called The um, Mentor Teaches Success. This is the first book I wrote. Oh, my God, I'm going to get embarrassed now. I'm going to, let's see the date on this thing, if it's in here. Um. The original copyright says 2001. Um, this was one of the first books I wrote. Uh, I wrote other books on lease purchasing, a lease purchase for the 21st century, lease purchase Bible. But this was a book. It's a business novel. Um, it's about this poor guy, uh, and um, he just can't. Uh, he's got a horrible job. Um, he, he hates his job. His name is Ralph. I took the name from my father, my beloved father-in-law is no longer with us anymore. And and uh, he's married to Emily, which is his wife. It's my mother-in-law. She's 93 years old. And I hope she's 193. She's lovely. Um, and um, still very active. Amazing. 93 drives, runs around all place, bro, volunteers for Habitat Humanity. Wrote this book. Anyway, he's got a job. He hates his job. Uh, he's got the boss from hell. How many of you have had the world... The shittiest job in the world. With the, and then you have a work boss who's always breathing down your neck and stuff. And you're not getting paid enough, but you need the job so bad because you got a family to support, you got a mortgage or rent to pay, or car payments and and everything. So this is this guy, and he's pretty miserable. He hates his job, and he gets into an altercation with his boss. Okay, it's, bottom line, gets into a fight with his boss, and obviously he's fired. And he doesn't know what to do, and he's just feeling horrible. And he goes to the park, and he meets this sweet old man, very well dressed old man, and he's a multi multi millionaire, very successful. And he takes him throughout the story, and he teaches him the principles of success. Um, really, and and it's a great ending. I love it. People love this. I sell this thing for. This comes in audio too, but I'm going to, if you guys want this book for, uh, would you guys like this book for free? Um, anybody who goes to my webpage um, and just goes to um, claudediamond.com um, and there's a little free book there, I will send you this book. I will send you the digital book for free, okay? This is my little gift to you guys, okay? I always like when you attend and listen here. So you get my book here for free. This is my new book, by the way. I'm not giving this away for free today, but... Um, uh, this is the mentor teaches the rule uh, the gut sales method of success. The rules of the gut sales method. Um, did you hear in that video I just played? Um, and by the way, that person I was doing that role play with is Armand Wright. Armand is a great guy. He's been a client of mine for three, four years at least. Um, he's very successful, um, and he did that role play with me, which has had thousands and thousands of hits. And um, we did something in that role play called the Godfather Close. And um, the Godfather Close is basically like from the Godfather, make them an offer they can't refuse. And um, you heard him he make, we, I made it in there to them in that role play. Um, and um, I was talking a lot about um, Drawing a line in the sand. I truly believe that you can close people in one phone call. I think when we get somebody on the phone, a prospect on the phone, we have to go for it. Sales is, here's my rule. You can write this down. Sales is dangerous. Sales is very dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because it can affect our ego. It can, 
Anybody here ever get a lot of rejection in sales in trying to persuade and influence another person and you get too much rejection? What happens? You, you feel like garbage. You, you The phone becomes a cactus. What do we always say? The phone, you don't want to touch a cactus. Believe me, I have touched a cactus. It takes forever. For, uh, I live in California part of the year. Um, I'm in Colorado right now. You get a, you touch a cactus, those needles stay in for a long time and you can get a, infected and everything. You don't want to, um, you don't want to touch a cactus, okay? But you want to make that phone almost like a sport. You look forward to it where you can where you can speak to people without reservation. Um, we have that confidence. Eye of the tiger. Remember Rocky? Um, when you can get on that phone and talk to people without reservation and be assertive and be a confident, not a bully, not a tricky, manipulative uh, intimidator or anything. Oh, the price goes up on Friday and all that salesy crap that we can't stand. But when you, when you can get on that phone, Without, and, and just talk to a few people every day, um, you, become a, you become dangerous. The sales could be dangerous because it affects our ego because uh, we get so much rejection. We don't want to make any more phone calls and we do something very deadly to our, to our wallet. It's called procrastination. Okay. And my one message to you guys is if you can learn a system of sales, learn Learn how to ask questions with stroking, nurturing, empathy. I say this all the time. Sales is a really, it's a million dollar skill. You can't just call up people. Okay, here I go on my tangent. Again. I'm on my soapbox here again, guys. Let me tilt this a little better. Okay, you cannot go and call up people and say, hi, can I have a minute of your time? I'm just reaching out to you today. La, la, la. What are they going to do? They're going to reject you. They're going to, why do something where you're going to get 100% failure? Isn't that nuts? What do we call that? Insanity? But that's what all the gurus are teaching. They're spending all this time on motivation. Oh, you're going to go out there. You're going to crush it and everything. But they don't tell you how to make those calls. They don't tell you what to say, how to say, what are the right words, the right stories to tell? How do you phrase the words in such a way with reverse psychology? We call it redirection. So many different things. Let's see what we have over here. Um, Jim Rohrbeck, by the way, if any, uh, if, if any of you guys, um, uh, Jim is a coach. He's a great coach. Um, check him out. He's, he's a good, he's one of the good guys out there. Um, hey, Aaron's here. There he is. Hey, Uncle Claude. Hey, Aaron. Thanks for joining my buddy, Sean Osby. Um, here's the stream yard, by the way, if you, anybody wants to come on and join me. I always, I always love when somebody comes on. Um, we're broadcasting, by the way, on Twitch, on Periscope, on Facebook Live, on YouTube. Um, we're on, um, we are on everything like there. This stream yard is fantastic, by the way. If any of you want to get into real marketing, um, you want to get on social media. I'll talk about that in a minute too. here, too. I have this on my notes here. Um, we want to be we want to be so confident we can get on that phone. OK, and we want to speak to quality prospects. I know we all got to do the cold calls. And then there's a lot of people talking about scraping and stuff. I'll get into that in a minute. But what you really want to do is get who doesn't want more warm calls. I have all the leads I need, by the way. I make money every day. I don't want to sound like a, a jerk here. I almost said shithead. Um, I, I hate these bragging. I hate bragging gurus. Do you get these gurus? Oh, and they, they, they got their little red suit and they're in they're in their Bentley or, or God, there's that one guy, all he does is curse and yell at the, I don't need to do that to you. Uh, you know, I'm glad you attend You're you know, you're my extended audience, my family here. Um, oh God. And the other one who stands in front of his jet and, and always uh, the ones that always show the bling bling and everything. Okay. That's great. I'm impressed. You're making money. Okay. How did you make that damn money? Why don't you tell me don't give me the motivational speech. Don't tell me to spend $5,000 walking on hot coals. Okay, how did you do it? But they never talk about that. I don't care which organization. They stay away from the most important thing. Is And, and this is where we have really lost our skill set in sales. Sales is, a, sales is psychology. It's human behavior. How do you get somebody to like you? to trust you, to say yes in one phone call. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's see some of our, 
Um, let's see. Some of my friends here came on here today. Oh, Mahesha so Soma Sundaram. I, I love your name. Soma Sundaram. And he's in Texas. How you been in Houston there? Great to see you, Mahesh. Come, come on if you want to come on, buddy. I haven't seen you in a long time. Give us give us the Texas report, all right? God, I love that name. It's a it flows, it's poetry. Uh, Sean Osby, I was told beer needed to be stewed cold to stay fresh. You are right, Sean. And we are drinking this wonderful cold from the fridge, cold from my little local liquor store here. I forgot the name of the darn store. It's Marty's. It's here in Winter Park. And um, God, we want to help these guys, you know, all these little businesses. Colorado's just starting to come back. Okay. The liquor stores are open. The hair salons are open now. Um, I believe the restaurants are doing uh, street side delivery. You can order in advance and stuff like that. Here's to your health. Oh, that is just one magnificent beer. Beer needs to be fresh, needs to be stored cold. But if you go in your supermarkets, they always have it stacked up on the floor. That's not, to me, I think beer loses something. Um, Coors in the old days, it was a, it had to be transported um, fresh, uh, refrigerated. And remember how big Coors, Coors was at one time, Smokey and the Bandit and all that good stuff? Let's see who else is he, who else is here. Mahesh says, yes, uh, Ryan, I would. Awesome. Okay, Paul is with here. Hey, you got a little cactus there, Paul. I love that. Excellent. Uh, Mahesh says, sure, come on. Um, the link is in the uh, thing there. Here, I'll post it one more time. Um, here is my StreamYard link for you guys. And anybody wants to come on, ask a question, wants to role play, wants to talk about beer. This is Beer with Claude Friday. I'm in a good mood. How about you guys? Okay. I know we, is this getting cooped up stuff? Is this getting old? This quarantine shit? Are we getting sick of this stuff? I'm so glad we are back here in Colorado. Uh, Claudia, isn't that a nice name? My wife. Um, we left San Diego and came here. Oh God, it must be five, six weeks ago. Um, it was in March. Yeah, four, five, six. Yeah, about six six weeks uh, at least. And now here we are. In, it's May now. Oh, my God. When did all this damn virus crap start? In early March. Here we are. Now we're in May. And um, we're in Colorado. We're safe here. We have only five. We're in a county the size of Rhode Island. There's only five people um, who have suffered from it. Uh, the, and so it's really been, um, it's a safe place. The supermarkets have plenty of meat. You guys have meat shortages where you are? That kind of, there was, I looked in the thing, we went shopping um, this morning. Claudia and I go like uh, seven in the morning. I run down to the uh, supermarket. I get in three miles right there. And uh, we go shopping real early. What do we spend? $348. It's are you finding that you're spending when you go to the supermarket, you don't go as often and you're spending a lot more money than you used to because you don't want to go there too often. And everybody's walking around with the face masks and stuff. Have I shown you guys my, my special, uh, you guys know, I like a, a, an adult libation right right now. Here is my special, especially made crown Royal face mask. Let me put this on for you. Tell me how beautiful this is. Isn't it great? You, I finally found a use for the crown Royal bag. Okay, so Crown Royal is can, good Canadian whiskey. Where's my Dr. Vibe friend here? <laughs> yes, it's, this de definitely, hey, it's, it's soft, it works, it makes people laugh. We need to laugh more. Are we not laughing enough? We're all, I think we're all so serious about all this stuff here. Uh, let's see here, Lee Hoon, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it, Lee Hoon Ratchford, sick of it. You're right. We've got to get back on. I, I've been saying this for a while. I am more scared of the economy. I don't get political, guys, because I like to bring people together. I like to laugh a lot. I like to drink beer with you guys. When you get political, God, if you go to a party today and you say the T word or you say any uh, Pelosi or anything, my God, you'll be you'll have a fight with somebody who needs that shit, right? Unbelievable. Uh, we're all sick of it, Leon. Um, that chicken, uh, no chicken here in. Uh, and laughing out loud here in Dayton, Ohio. No or not chicken. Um, we have everything here in Colorado. Isn't it funny? Uh, when we were in San Diego, we went down, uh, we went to Avon's. There was no bread. Can you imagine no bread? How do you, in a city like San Diego, you got an aisle that's the length of a football field and there's no friggin' bread. There's no milk. We like skim milk. No skim milk. 
nothing. Plenty of beer, though. No beer. Have you noticed there's no beer shortage in this country? What is, what is going on with that, right? Uh, let's see. Another comment here. Great designer mask. We'll always remind of Crown Royal. Yeah, it, it is. Crown Royal, uh, we don't do whiskey with Claude, uh, but we do do beer with Claude. By the way, Mahesh, you have to talk. Some of the best beers I've ever had are from India, by the way. They have some one. I think one of the one beer from India I've had was called White Horse. It's a big bottle with a white horse. It was fantastic beer. And that's uh, from India We is where we get um, uh, the, uh, the the IPA, uh, Indian Pale Ale, that lovely, bitter, hoppy taste. I haven't had an IPA in a while. I think that next time we do beer with Claude, we'll definitely do that. Um, not a shortage of chicken. Oh, okay, good. Always plenty of chicken, but you got to be careful with chicken, right? Okay, that one plant, was it not Purdue? Um, I forget the one plant. They closed it because uh, a couple of the workers died um, in the one plant in the Midwest, Iowa, or something like that. And now they scrubbed it down, cleaned it. In our supermarket here today, they had a cleaning crew going down the aisles, cleaning the uh, shelves, cleaning cans and stuff. I was impressed by that. Then everybody is all wearing the masks and, and gloves and things like that. People are really, um, you know, I always said this country is uh, resilient and we care about our friends, our neighbors and everything. Wearing a mask doesn't do anything, but I think it shows uh, it shows support. And if you're not feeling well, you're not going to spread it to somebody else. Well, you know, the last thing in the world is you want to be cause an older person harm or something like that. So I think that it's it shows unity uh, to a great extent. We're going this through this thing. We're going to get through this damn thing together. Um, we're coming out of it right now. I just hope it doesn't start up again like they're talking about. Um, let's see here. I have another. I wore ski goggles to Costco. Good for you, Paul. Ski goggles are popular here in San Diego. People are wearing them. I wear my sunglasses. I wear my Colorado mask or my Crown Royal. Um, and um, how many miles? I got in here. I'll prove it today. I run every day 10 miles, but today um, I got in 11.81. I took a, I told my wife I was going out for a little run, and two hours later, um, it was just so nice here in Colorado today. Um, I'm up here in the mountains, 10,000 feet. It was, uh, oh my gosh, 55 degrees, a bloody heat wave. Um, before I forget one more time, I got a free book for anybody who wants it. Uh, the Mentor Teaches Success. It's my success book. Um, go ahead and uh, just go to my webpage. It's down below, claudediamond.com. Uh, click on free book and I'll send that to you probably tomorrow morning if that's okay. All right, guys. Um, let's go back to talking about sales. Um, I work from my home office here. I love I, all my homes. Um, I have a dedicated office. I have super, the, think about it. You can work from home. I don't have any employees. I, I we, were, we did a video the other day about um, acquisition managers. Um, oh God, wait, I wrote it down here somewhere. Wait a second. These are the, there's a lot of gurus out there. You're going to love this. Okay, so, uh, watch this. Um, they tell you you need a, a, a team, uh, an acquisition manager. Um, you need um, uh, all these different, uh, you need VAs. You need all these employees, all these people. You know what? You don't need anybody. I run a very successful business. I don't want to sound like a jerk here. But all I do is I do my marketing. I have quality leads. I get a... I get a handful of quality leads every day, not garbage leads. And I'll talk about the difference between garbage or blind leads and quality leads. You want good leads. Why? Because it's easy to talk to somebody who came to you, people who opt in, people who call you, text you, schedule with you. It's a much better, isn't that? It's a much nicer conversation. By the way, all my conversations, when someone schedules with me, I have a on my webpage, claudediamond.com. I have a calendar. It's called Newbies. Anybody could schedule with me for 15 minutes. They automatically are sent a um, Zoom link. I think it's imperative that you get people face. We have this wonderful technology now. We have Skype. We have Zoom. I've been using Zoom for years. Everyone seems to be discovering it now. And Zoom is just wonderful. And uh, we have Facebook Live. We uh, we have all these. Um, we have. Um, um, oh gosh, 
the uh, YouTube, excuse me, YouTube. We have uh, on your Apple phone, FaceTime, which is a marvelous live video system. When you get a customer, get, get on with them live. You don't have to get in your car. You don't have to drive around. You don't have to, there's not much traffic now, but think about it. Can you talk to more people from your home? Can you talk in their living room or your office or whatever? How many people can you talk to in a day face-to-face? -face? Marketing. The key to marketing is to have quality prospects. Now, um, I, I was talking before that most of the training programs and the coaches and gurus and stuff out there, they talk about, and I'm not bad-bathing my competition. My God, you guys can do that for me. No, I never bad-mouth the competition. Um, it's just it's not worth it, and it's, it's bad sport. But the thing about it is, not unless they have it, they, they got it coming. Okay, I got to. I'll tell you a story about a lady. To, I did a video on this one lady who called me last week. She has taken um, every program. She has spent her, and she's a hardworking woman, not a wealthy woman, and she's she's back east, and she's told me, Claude, I spent my life savings on uh, fortune, wealth, acquisition builders, all these kind of programs. Um, she's probably taken five or six different programs. One of the programs was 30,000, another was 10,000. And the price is inconsequential, by the way. It's a value you receive. But none of these people will talk to her. They always put her in a, they always put her in a recorded group call. Uh, they give her a VA who is not financially successful in in his or her own right. Okay, they just have a lot of experience, but they're not financially free. Uh, to me, I want to talk, my mentor was financially free. He could make more money in one phone call than I could make in a whole year at a corporate job with a law degree. Um, my, You want to talk to, if you want to learn, doesn't have to be me, this isn't a per commercial, self-promotion commercial, but you want to speak to somebody who's doing it, doing it honestly, ethically, and is accountable to you. Number one, accountability. That's the big one. Flashing neon lights here. Accountability. Get somebody who is doing it, okay, who is living well and is willing to show you their secrets of success, their techniques, their skills, how they do it. That is the key. I don't want to work with their employee. I don't want to hear a recording. I, I don't want to get stuck with too much busy work. I want to speak to somebody on a regular basis. The secret of success is find somebody who's doing it and emulate, copy them, um, and make sure they're accountable to you. And that's the shortcut to success. Find somebody who's doing it and, and, and be their apprentice, if you will, their mentee. Uh, that's the way you do it. Um, one call close on the iWatch. The, uh, this is called an Apple Watch. Uh, Paul, I love this device. This Apple Watch, uh, together with the AirPod Pros, these are marvelous. These are the best Bluetooth um, uh, silent. Uh, oh my God! If you're on an airplane when we can fly again, God, are the flight? Are the airlines going to survive? By the way, I mean, what's going on here? All these businesses—they're hurting so bad. I, I really hope. I want air. I want airlines. I like to travel. I want to go somewhere someday. Um, and I hope these airlines survive. But AirPod Pros, this is fantastic. A little bit on the pricey side, um, but they're marvelous. The sound quality is fantastic. And you can dampen the sound if you're in a noisy area. And um, I make phone calls uh, right through this watch. I don't even take – I used to have to run with my iPhone. And, you know, my iPhone here, it holds all my – credit cards in my wallet and, and an emergency 20 or $100 bill or whatever I have there. Um, I use a little holder called Silk, by the way. I got it on uh, Amazon uh, Prime. This is wonderful. This is my whole wallet, my phone and just a driver's license and uh, one or two credit cards and a $20 bill. And that's all you really need in nowadays, isn't it? And a debit card too. I got a PayPal debit card. Love PayPal. Um, but I can go running. I can take phone calls through this now without running with my uh, iPhone. And I usually have one of these in my ears if, um, if I'm running in the woods. If I'm running in a noisy place, I might have two. And I can take calls. I've actually done deals while running. Okay. And so the technology is fantastic. It's, it's like $10 a month to receive phone calls through this. And this device is wonderful. I can listen to audiobooks, podcasts, 
unlimited music. Okay, I have Pandora on this. I have uh, the Apple Music. Um, I love to go running every day. I do 10 miles a day. Your Uncle Claude wants to stay young and health healthy for you. You guys haven't said anything. I got a haircut, by the way, huh? You remember I had a Betty a two week, um, what is seven, eight days ago? I had Betty Boop out to here, man. <laughs> and uh, finally got a good haircut. Marketing. Um, you, you've got to. You've got to have good leads. You, most of the gurus talk about the strategies. They talk about motivation. They talk about marketing. There's different types of marketing depending what business you're in. I know a lot of you are in um, real estate. Um, real estate is, uh, I love real estate. I've been in it a long time. Real estate's always been good to me. Um, the thing about it is, what's the most important thing? Knowing the strategies. Are you going to do a lease purchase, a lease option? Are you going to do a wholesale assignment, an arbitrage or assignment? Are you going to do a subject to? Um, that means subject to the existing mortgage. Are you going to do owner financing when you have an owner that has a free and clear property or property with a lot of um, equity in that property? Can you negotiate a sale and they hold them and they hold their equity? Um, so that's fine. Negotiate those strategies. How do you negotiate them? How do you get in one phone call a commitment from somebody? Now you got to have leads. Most people talk about leads. They talk about scraping. Scraping is based on basically um, going out there to Zillow, to Craigslist, uh, to, um, oh gosh, uh, there's so many different ones uh, out there, uh, real estate pages. Name me a few real estate pages. Help me out here. Redfin is another one. Trulia is another one. Uh, the MLS expired listing, and they scrape. You can go on Fiverr, by the way, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, and pay somebody $5. They will scrape for you, and it won't cost you a lot of money, by the way. Um, so you got to get leads. A lot of people get leads that way. Some people chase leads. They buy a list and they'll mail postcards and envelopes. Only trouble is, unless you're uh, over 30 years old, most people don't go to the post office. My kids don't go to the post office. Um, a lot of people don't go like uh, like they used to go to the post office on a regular basis. Um, a lot of people do text to e texting. So they buy a list from Listserv or one of the companies out there. Um, they format the list based on foreclosures, people behind in their taxes or in their payments, um, people who have absentee properties and nearby geographically. This is what I call blind marketing. You, you're you looking for some kind of mathematical algorithm here that, that leads you to believe that these people might be more motivated than someone else. But it's still... I mean, it's still blind marketing. It's still, you might send out a thousand letters and you're hoping to get, uh, the gurus always say three to 5% return. It's, it's guru bullshit. Okay, sorry. Um, but it's usually 1%. If it's 1%, it's brilliant in my opinion. Um, okay, so at least you, at least you have uh, 10 phone, 10 people. Um, usually it's a percentage of 1%, truth be told. Um, you, they tell you, well, you got to spend a lot of money to make money and you got to spend it constantly, constantly. Yeah, but the leads are weak. OK, I sound like Glenn Glory, Glenn what, Ross. Remember that movie, Jack Lemmon? He says the leads are weak, um, but they're leads. OK, I'm, and they're cold calls and and you got to spend a lot of money. I don't spend any money for my leads. Um, I, I don't. Um, I, I do social media marketing. Let's get a few. Let's catch up with some of the questions here. Paul says, which paid Zoom plan do you recommend? Um, I started out with the free one and I'm on the next one. I think it's it's so reasonable, Paul. Um, I think it's the pro plan. I, I, I believe I'm paying $15, $16 a month on Zoom. I do with my mentees a Zoom meeting every Monday. We have 40, 50 people. I have a couple hundred uh, mentees, clients all over the world, but if usually about 35, 40, I record it and I send it to the rest and it works. Zoom is brilliant. So if you're looking to do a live conference meetings or consulting or coaching or any kind of educational, use Zoom. I used to use Skype in the beginning and Skype is still, it's okay. Uh, Skype is good for one-on-one -on -one calls uh, and you click a button, you can record it and it's uh, there's nothing wrong with Skype. It's owned by Microsoft. Uh, the only trouble is Skype is not good, in my opinion, for group calls. So if you have, 
more than one or two people on it. Skype is not it. Zoom is fantastic. 15 bucks a month. And I also, by the way, when I do my marketing, I record them on Zoom. Zoom for recording, for marketing, has actual enhancements in it, okay? They make you look better. They make you look thinner. They, I don't know what it is, but there's a button to click in Zoom in the preferences on Zoom, and it actually enhances your physical features. It makes you look better. Hey, your Uncle Claude is going to use every little thing he can, okay? Uh, absolutely. Um, Redfin, thank you. Um, Let's see here. Re Thank you, Sean. Uh, Jane, Sean, oh, Sean Osby says, hi, Jane. And Jane just uh, corrected me. The uh, plan I'm on on Zoom is $16.66. Jane knows. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Have free Zoom, but it'll, you know, Zoom pays for, if Zoom gives you one customer, Paul, what's the value in that? I, I, I'm really, I'm not a skin flint. I'm not a Scrooge. But I do believe in when you when you have a business, keep your overhead low, but use things that make you money. Zoom makes me money. Uh, book like a boss, blab my webpage that makes me money. Um, YouTube and marketing. I was telling somebody today, um, you, this is uh, this is my marketing. People ask me. Um, I talk to people every day, and I am astounded by how much they spend on marketing on mailers, on mojo dialers, on link serve, on uh, texting, on VAs. They spend thousands and thousands of dollars, sometimes monthly. You know how much your Uncle Claude spends on on uh, marketing? Zero, nada, bubkiss. Um, I actually get a check. This is going to sound like bragging again. This is stroking, uh, self-stroking. Okay, I heard that. Um, actually, they, I got a check from AdSense, which is Google, which is Google. Google owns YouTube. They send me a check, a couple hundred bucks every month for my videos. This is that beautiful. Can you imagine getting paid for your marketing where you get where you really get good leads? Isn't that amazing? Um, oh, Sean says there's a serious delay today. Oh, I'm so sorry to. I'm sorry to hear that, Sean. Uh, I did get a warning from, I'm using StreamYard by, right now, by the way. StreamYard cost me, um, I think it's $49, $59 a month. StreamYard takes all the different social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Periscope, and puts it all together. So I'm sitting here uh, doing one broadcast and trying to get... Um, texting it doesn't give me a lot of it doesn't give me a lot of um, information from um, uh, Facebook unfortunately but I do get periscope and I do get you YouTube your questions and things like that um, it, it just makes it much simpler um, I can you can use zoom by the way to do um, social media marketing zoom it can, you can broadcast from zoom and simultaneously broadcast in uh, YouTube or in Facebook by the way for those who, those of you who didn't know that, um, putting out a message in social media, like I'm doing right now. By the way, I got a free book for you guys. Anybody who wants it, the mentor teaches success. This is a Horatio Alger rags to riches story I wrote 20 years ago. Oh my god! Um, but it's fun. It you'll read it one night and you'll this book will make you hungry. You know how your uncle Claude likes to talk about food all the time. This book will actually make you hungry. Okay, it's about a guy meets a mentor and they travel all over and he teaches them the principles of success while eating all over California, New Jersey pizza, uh, Hawaii, all uh, Texas barbecue, everything. While he's teaching, I, I wrote it while I was hungry. What can I say? <laughs> um, but I put out video, I put out live streaming like this. It goes into all the different social media uh, that it's monetized. You know, those little ads they run. So I get a little check every month from uh, YouTube, uh, Google AdSense. The thing is on my videos, you have to put out short videos or a podcast. It can be pictures. It can be short, a little attention getting videos. Have you guys checked it? Has anyone here checked out TikTok yet? You guys want to have fun? Check out TikTok. There is some marvelous videos on there. All the kids are going there, and I do. When I say kids, I do mean it. It's fun. It's a very creative videos. I'm going to be going. Uh, one of my goals is to go on to uh, TikTok, uh, TikTok, excuse me, um, and add it into my broadcast. 
uh, besides YouTube. So I'll put out little, like this week, I did six videos every, and I can schedule those videos. And when I upload them to YouTube, I keep them short, non-commercial. Do not do a commercial. People want information. They're sick of commercialization. Don't say, uh, uh, I'll charge you this much or anything. You don't, you haven't earned their trust and respect yet. Put out a video that's interesting. Talk about option. If you're in real estate, talk about option consideration. Talk about your favorite strategy. Talk about your biggest mistake that you made today. Talk about your successes. Talk about what you learned. And don't be anybody else but yourself. You're good enough just being who you are. You don't have to be anybody else. And if you give people good content on a regular basis, contemporary, consistent, non-commercial content, you will attract an audience. They will subscribe. And those people will follow you. And they'll get that little notification. You know that little subscribe button? They got to hit that little bell too. Um, so if you go to my YouTube, I have, I think, 1,100, 1,200 videos now. I put out videos and then I schedule them. So I'll knock out two, three, five videos in one shot. I got to get in the mood. And I usually just write down a topic and I wing it. Okay. I went to the, um, uh, maybe, some, did any of you go to my school, the University of Fake It Until You Make It? That's my alum. That's my uh, graduating school. So you get on there, you talk a little bit about something, you make it fun. Um, you, I like self-deprecating humor, putting myself down or talking about embarrassing moments and things like that. Um, but I like to keep it honest and real. What do um, millennials say? Transparent, epic, authentic, all those good words. It just means honesty, doesn't it? Be honest with people and communicate good stuff, and you'll see what's happening. What do we got here? Jane says, hi, Sean. All right. Um, getting some stuff here. Uh, Francisco, we got a lot of people on today. Thank you for the thumbs up, guys. I appreciate it. We've got 20 people on um, this one part here. What do you think of the leads that can be obtained from your clients after the deals? Francisco, you're going to have to elaborate on that. Tell me exactly what you mean. Um, the leads, are you talking about referrals? Um, I'm going to get controversial here. I think when I do business with somebody, I don't want to bother them. I don't want to give them work. I don't want to put them in an embarrassing situation where, oh, give me, uh, I need five referrals from you, Mr. Prospect. No, I don't do that. I've got a new, if I get somebody who buys my, my products, my packages, retains me for consultation, does a real estate deal with me. Um, the last thing I want to do is bother them for referrals. If you, here's my thinking, and you guys can disagree with anything I say, okay? This is not the last word on anything. But I think bother, I don't want to bother a customer who helped put mac and cheese on my table. I don't want to make them, oh, I need five phone numbers of your friends. And I'm going to call up his friends, and then they're going to go back to him and say, why'd you give out my phone number? No. I believe if you give good people good value, if you give them that accountability word that I was talking about before, um, they will refer you naturally anyway. I get referrals all the time because I help people to give good phone. I help people in real estate, insurance, marketing, car sales, network marketing. I help them to overcome the fear of speaking to strangers or even speaking to warm calls and doing things that really just bring on failure. You know, if you are sounding like every scripted salesperson, you're doomed to fail. You've got to be fresh. You've got to do pattern interrupts. I think we talked about that a week or two ago. Going on the phone with somebody and and what, what are most people? I did a role play with one of my students today and he said, Claude, can I have a And he said, Claude, can I have a minute of your time? I said, no, I'm real busy. I'm changing a diaper. I got to pick up my wife from Taekwondo. Uh, call me at another time. Call me in two, three weeks. Bye-bye. Click. So don't set yourself up and say, "Do are you busy right now? Do you have a minute of time? That's, or, or read a script. Hi, I'm just reaching out to you. To, that's garbage. That's old school selling. A pattern interrupt is when you get on the phone with somebody, and you basically say, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, sorry it took me so long to get back to you. Uh, wh uh, why am I calling you today? What's your, oh, I had your phone number in front of me here. How can I help you today? Well, you called me. Well, I did, sir, but I don't know what it's about. I'm embarrassed here. What, this isn't about real estate or something. Oh, well, I have a home for sale. Boom, you're in. Throw them off balance. Act familiar. Do we, here's the question to ask yourself. Do we treat people differently that we know 
as opposed to a stranger calling us selling aluminum siding at dinner time. Of course. You guys know the 11th commandment? Sean, I know you know this. The 11th commandment, Moses dropped one on the way down the mountain. You guys didn't, you didn't know that, did you? Um, it's a good Passover story. <laughs> so Passover's over. The, um, the 11th commandment says that you can still get into heaven by, uh, by treating a salesman like shit. <laughs> okay. Um, so a strange salesperson, a person who interrupts your day or comes, uh, you know, just tries to sell you out of nowhere or is just bothering you and going salesy, the, the prospect's going to put up the, go to their default system. They're going to raise the drawbridge. They're going to say, no, thanks. There's no interest. There's no emotional investment in there. A absolutely not. You build organic word of mouth with all this. Yes, Paul. Um, you don't need a lot of garbage leads. You just need a few quality leads. So when you put out content, I like YouTube videos. I like live streaming. I do a lot of podcasts on other people's podcasts because then I can cannibalize their audience. If I speak to somebody who has 500 subscribers and I talk to them and I give away a, a free book like I'm doing tonight, The Mentor Teaches Success. This is the most motivating book and it's free on my web page tonight. Um, I'll get it to you guys tomorrow. Anybody who goes to my, ClaudeDiamond.com hits that thing. It's that little uh, orange button there, free book. I'll send that my my book to you. It's better than you guys spend. I think it's thirty five bucks. I sell it for you guys. Get it for free tonight, okay? I just you know when I give away things, I introduce myself to you. I show you that maybe there's a different. I have a different approach, a different philosophy, a different system. Guts. Um, but when you put out a content poll, you're you're completely correct. You um, attract people. You virtually attract people. They say, gee, maybe this guy or girl's got something that's different. I, I like their content. I like their fresh approach. They're different. They're fresh. Um, maybe I don't agree with them, but um, I want to hear what else they have to say. Boom. They hit the subscribe button. You have now captured them for maybe your other videos, your audios, your podcasts, your pictures, your Instagrams, your uh, TikToks, whatever you're doing. We have all this. We have Twitter, Facebook, we have all this social media out there. And if you guys can put compelling, consistent, non-commercial, uh, humorous content on a regular basis, you will attract people. Then when you attract them, number two, okay, giving away all my content here today because I don't mind sharing with you guys. This is what happens when I drink a, a Sam Adams beer here. I need another beer here. This is almost, can I drink, have a sip of beer? Here we go, guys. This is a wonderful Sam Adams beer we're drinking tonight. Just a wonderful beer. I'm going to grab something out of the fridge and get another beer here. And we're going to uh, wind up. You um, And you know what? I'll, I'll talk to you about my marketing a little bit more and I'll answer your questions. I'm going to go grab another beer. Can, can you give me 30 seconds? I'll see you in this. Give me 30 seconds. Be right back. Woohoo, beer. Oh, you're going to love this one. Anybody read? What's your favorite college beer? Tell me your favorite college beer. Carling Black, I'm, I'm, I'm an oldie moldy. So remember, um, a Milwaukee Carling Black label. Yingling, the greatest surprise in beer. When I was going to college, Stockton State College, Southern New Jersey, the, the one of the most popular beers coming out of Pennsylvania was Yingling beer. Today, Yingling is the darling of New York and New Jersey and everywhere. Yingling was the cheapest damn beer you could imagine. It's also one of the oldest breweries in America. I think it even goes back to almost colonial times. That's how far back it goes. Um, but another good old college beer. There you go. Who remembers Rolling Rock? Remember those little nip bottles with the horse's head on it? Good old Rolling Rock. It's a, it's a pale ale. It's a cheap beer. It's not a biggie. Uh, let's, uh, let's see. We got a few comments here. Let's go down here. Uh, what do you think of emailing prospects and the interested parties speak with them over the phone? <sighs> it's not what I do. Um, it depends. Who are you emailing? Total. Are you getting a list totally from 
see, there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to spend money. And when you're starting a business, you got to watch your budget. And who are you emailing? People who are in probate, foreclosure, behind in their payments. Is the math in your favor? What kind of piece are you mailing them? Something interesting? Something that my my feeling is I'd rather atta- attract three to five people by all social media content, just like we're doing now, live streaming. Okay. If one of you goes to my webpage tonight to get my free book, okay, that I'm giving, and then that person says, hey, I can do a free consultation with Claude. And then we have a Zoom com- a call and we talk for 15 minutes and they believe I can teach them how to give good phone, close in one phone call, overcome all fears and objections and paranoia about the phone as a cactus. If I can get that one person by doing this live stream, that uh, you see the method to my madness here? I'd rather speak to someone who comes to me, who schedules with me, who knows who I am, a little bit of my philosophy about the gut sales method, okay? And that's an easy phone call. And then sometimes people call me with real estate deals. Claude, I've got this property. What should I do? And that maybe I'll join them in that deal. Maybe I will um, really... and. Maybe I'll consult on that deal. Maybe I'll send them information. I'll sell them informational products on it. But they came to me. Psychologically, how much easier is it? This is a big duh, okay? Isn't it easier to talk to somebody who comes to you, a warm call, than chasing somebody and calling them up out of nowhere? They don't know who you are. They know nothing about you. You came out of left field, and you're the 31st person to call them in the last 10 days. Okay, you know how they treat you, right? Let's open up this beer. This is Rolling Rock. This is this is really good old fat. This is good old cheap shit college beer, and it's I like. You know what? I still like PBR. Okay, I'll admit it. I I I drink real expensive beers too. Do you guys ever buy some of these Belgian beers? Okay, I mean that are fifteen twenty dollars a a bottle. Um, oh, my, one of my favorite Belgians is from Canada. It's Belgium style. Uh, La Fin des Mans, um, and, and I apologize to my French me, uh, friends. Um, it's La Fin des Mans. It means the end of the world. It's a phenomenal beer. Here, let's have some. Uh, let's have a little Rolling Rock here. This is not the same as Sam Adams. Okay, this is a look at the color. It's a lot lighter. Okay, and that foamy little head that's going to last maybe 20, 30 seconds. Okay, I like it when when it's a nice foamy head and it just lasts a lot longer. Um, uh, I don't email my, pro- I think when you get up talking to people is the lost art and science of persuasion, get them on the phone, get them on FaceTime video, zoom or Skype, get face to face to people. Okay. The eyes are the windows to the soul. Can you read somebody? It, it's just common sense is looking at somebody face to face on video. Isn't that a better selling environment? Come on. And the thing about it is to, I say this to all my students, do you approach people as you're the doctor, you're the EMT, you're the lawyer, you're someone there to help them. Um, If you approach them in that way, what's the problem? Oh, um, why isn't that home sold yet? Or, oh, you wouldn't want to get out of your apartment and into a home today that you could accumulate rent credit or buy in the future, would you? Is that something you'd like? Should we talk about that? Mind if we talk about money first? Because money is involved in getting into a home. Wouldn't you agree? Boom. You learn how to ask questions with redirection. And I get all my leads from social media, which I do every day. I spend 30 to 60 minutes on it. Let's go to some more questions here. Um, Paul, aluminum siding. Yeah. Are they still selling aluminum siding? There's a great movie. I love sa- What's your favorite sales movie? Glenn Glory, Glenn Ross, um, Boiler Room. Oh, Wolf of uh, the Wolf of Wall Street. That was a good one. Um, there's so many good sales movies out there. I love them all. Let's have a sip of this Rolling Rock to your health, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have to get off soon. I don't mean to brag, but tonight is pizza night. Friday night is pizza salad night. What is better than a nice hot steaming? You ever take a bite of pizza? You bite and bite a pizza and that hot cheese burns your mouth a little. You get the crunch of the dough. Okay, taste. You taste the sausage or whatever you like on it or the little fishies, the anchovies, okay? And, oh, something about pizza on Friday nights. Can't go out, so 
we're making our own tonight, you know, and it's not Papa John's either. Anyway, to your health. This is excellent. Okay. This is just a, this is as good as any Coors or Budweiser. It is a light taste. It is, um, it is a, a fresh taste. Um, I got it cold out of the fridge, by the way. Don't get, don't get beer off the supermarket or liquor store floor. Get it fresh all the time. This is delicious. Another sip to your health. You're having that book shows authority and it's great business. Card. It is. Uh, here's my, here's, here it is, Paul. If I give a, um, I, I respect a prospect. What is a prospect worth? That's the question you got to ask yourself. People spend hundreds, thousands of dollars for a prospect. You know, what do all the gurus say? Oh, you got to get, do your mailers, do your um, texting and emailers and all that other stuff. And you put them all in your funnel and then they come down and then you send them a follow-up or you give them to your VA or your acquisition manager or all that junk. And then so, somewhere in the process, which seems way too complicated to me, way too many people, way too much money. Somewhere in that process, you hope that you have someone to speak to eventually. Oh my God, I'm exhausted just explaining that. When I give something away for free, like this book I'm giving away for free tonight, The Mentor Teaches Success, to anybody who goes to my webpage, claudediamond.com, it says free book. There's a little button there, can't miss it. And I'll send you this book. It's a fun, it's a business novel. Okay. I And I sell a lot of these, by the way, uh, I, on Amazon, on eBay, on my web. I sell a lot. I'm giving it away for free tonight. Just as a way somebody watches this video, this live stream, or something I've done somewhere, and then they say, hey, let me get, can't hurt, it's free, right? They read the book, and they maybe they hit that subscribe button and that little bell on YouTube, and they learn more about me. And maybe they say, maybe this guy's got something. Maybe this is interesting. He's got a different twist on things. He's not just, he's talking about being comfortable on the phone, being persuasive, creating the right environment, learning how to ask questions and close people in one phone call. Maybe this is someone I should call up, text, email, um, sub, um, schedule a 15-minute consultation, which anyone can do on my page. And if I can talk to enough people who have discovered me and what I stand for and my kind of sales, you know what? That person could be, that's a high probable prospect. Great book. Um, I read it a long time ago. Uh, the name escapes me. You guys are going to have to help me. It's called High Probability Selling. I'm embarrassed. I can't remember the author's name. Um, it'll come to me in a second. High Probability Selling. Great book about selling to people who have the need, have the money to pay for the need, and the authority to give you a commitment. When? In the first phone call. You want that? That may sound crazy to a lot of you, but I actually close people. I get commitments. I get future appointments in one phone call. You need to get something in that first phone call. Why? Because you got to protect yourself. You've got to. Um, there's nothing wrong with instant gratification. You're doing all the hard work. You're studying. You're spending money, way too much money, by the way, on either phony baloney gurus or on marketing programs that don't work, that give you crap leads. And then you got to, you, sooner or along the way, you've got to make a sale. If you don't make a sale, you're going to be drinking Rolling Rock the rest of your life in, instead of good Sam Adams. Okay, see that segue? Um it's just a good way to show authority, empathy, and all the other things. Uh, Keystone Light, not a bad beer. It's all right. It's a cheap beer, but it, a Bush Light from Florida. I mean, who remembers Bush? A uh, Bush, right from Florida, which is owned by Budweiser, right? Um, oh, you're getting Felipe. I love Felipe's. Oh, Felipe's is my favorite in San Diego. And there's only, I go to only two Felipe's, the one in Old Town. With the hanging salami, did you ever go? Felipe's is a chain of grub of pizzerias in San Diego, Southern California. They have about 20, 25 of the stores. I don't. They might be closed. Are they open again? Oh well, for pickup, sure. And Felipe's is great. Uh, it's just a fun, family-run kind of a place. Uh, the best one is in Old Town. The next best one, this you're going to laugh at this, is in National City on Broadway, I believe. 
Um, it's busy as hell. They got the little mini parking lot there, and it's always full and crazy busy. And Friday night, a good old Felipe's pizza, extra cheese, please, uh, is, is great here. Uh, pizza, very good. Oh, uh, Carl, New York City pizza. I'm a New York City boy. Manhattan, okay, Washington Heights. Do you know how... Do you know what's the hardest thing about living in California, Colorado, Hawaii, or anywhere else? You got to give up New York City pizza. Do you know how? Do you know how bad I miss pizza sometimes? <laughs> oh man! Oh, they're open for pickup. Oh yeah, Jersey. I think by the way, Jersey pizza. Uh, this is controversial, but who has better pizza? New York, uh, Manhattan. When I say New York, I mean Manhattan. You know what I'm saying here? Uh, or Brooklyn has great pizza. Staten Island has some phenomenal pizzerias. Don't know about the Bronx too much or Queens. I'm sure Queens has good stuff too. And the Bronx. Okay, I, I heard you guys. Bronx is okay. But Jersey has great. I moved to Jersey when I was 16. Jersey has great pizzerias. Oh, my God. But best pizzeria is a little one in Netcong, New Jersey uh, called Carmine's. It's a little – I think four generations have been selling – they make a calzone. They make pizza that's – oh, yeah. And another pizzeria, Hopakong, New Jersey, the Grotto. My friend – my good friend Paul runs that uh, pizzeria there. His – I'll tell you what. He makes he makes some great pizzas, amazing pies. Oh, God. Okay, we're getting hungry. Open, open for pickup, huh? Okay, yeah, baby. Uh, Tony, ever have Lido's Pizza? No, tell me about Lido's – what is Lido's Pizza? Is it a frozen? Is it a – is it a chain or something like that? I'm not familiar with it. Tell me more. You know, you could, you know, what is it? At, uh, Jerry Maguire, uh, the one uh, phrase, she, the girl says, you had me at hello. You say, pizza, you had me at pizza, man. I'll, I'll tell you, really. It's, it's, it's a one thing. Hey, listen, I have, oh, here, let me share something with you guys before we run out of time here. I even, I, I think I have a pizza video here for you guys. Would you guys like to see a pizza video? Let's see if we have one here. Uh, where's my pizza video? No, I don't have it. It's a, I'll, get, I'll show it to you next time. It's me, Dan. It says, uh, uh, it's a jib jab video I did with me dancing with a pizza. You know, jib jab. Um, Chula Vista on the broad, on Broadway. Yeah, uh, that is that is a great Felipe's Pizzeria here. And 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 this here's real sacrilege. When I'm desperate and I don't want to drive, have you guys ever had Costco pizza? Okay, I heard that. My wife feels the same way. It's not that bad. It's it's really not that bad when you you just don't want to try. You, we get some pizzas. We get one pizza from a, pl a place called Delish. Uh, it's in Chula Vista. It's a great. They make their own dough and sauce and everything. And it's a thirty-two dollar pizza, but it's a seafood pizza. And if Claudia is my wife's watching this right now, she's going to start salivating. They make the best seafood pizza. Do you ever have a seafood pizza with clams, with scallops, with shrimp, with um, uh, calamari on it, and, you, and, and white cheese? Oh, am I making you guys hungry? This is sales, by the way. When you talk to somebody and you use the right words, you know, you use the uh, sense of taste, touch smell. Oh, can you smell that slice coming out of the oven and it's hot in your hand and you bite into it and that crunch and the cheese melting in your mouth with the pepperoni and the sausage and the oil comes down. No, the oil shouldn't come down your arm. <laughs> Costco pizza is okay. It really is. It, uh, yeah. I was surprised. Uh, uh, absolutely. I'm going to go guys. Um, let's summarize here before I go. Um, you can be the smartest person in the world with your strategies. You can spend a fortune on marketing, but you want quality leads. You know, you want you want quality leads, and you can do that through social media marketing. And it's an investment of time, and it is creativity, but it's free. Like I said earlier, YouTube pays me. I don't pay them, um, and I get tons of leads. I get so many quality leads. When I say quality, I mean I attract people. I don't chase them. They come to me that I have someone follow up and makes phone calls. I have a fellow who works for me. He's been with me 14 years, and he follows up on all of my leads, my old leads from years ago, my recent leads. I call them first if they're a hot lead. If they're a weak lead, I give them to my follow-up guys, and they call. They set up appointments for me. 
The only thing you have to do is speak to three to five people a day and use guts. It's a three-step system. It starts with a pattern interrupt. You set a little agenda. You then go into your qualification. You learn how to ask questions with stroking, nurturing, and empathy. empathy. Okay, ask questions with uh, redirection, which is just reverse psychology. Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, if I could find you a three-bedroom home in the next week that met with your budget and it was exactly in the area where you wanted to be and it was good schools for your child, and I told you I needed $15,000 uh, for the contract, what would you say to me next? Boom, you're closing in one sentence by using that reverse psychology. Absolutely. Hey, honey, I was talking about um, delish pizza, seafood pizza. Oh, God, yes. Hey, Carl, thank you for everything. Thanks for joining. Oh, we got another Cizano's Pizza in my area. Oh, where's your area, Leon? Uh, tell me more about that. Um, listen, anyway, give good phone, study sales, the art and science of persuasion, make magic happen. And you guys take care. Be safe out there. Nobody deserves success more than you, isn't but that? Did, but did you tell them about Carmine's and Netcon? Oh, I did. Carmine's. Oh, okay. Okay. I told Carmine's oh, and Netcon. Yes. The Grotto and Opacon, which is excellent. Yeah. No, it's excellent. Carmine's is better. Okay. We we talked about. Um, but uh, delish with the seafood pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, oh God. And oh. we have Paul is going to Felipe's tonight. I like Felipe's. It's okay. It's okay. Felipe's is good pie it's, and everything. It's, so I'm going to say, I'll bid you adieu. Uh, we've been on here for a while. Thanks for joining me. We've been on, what, 71 minutes. You, it's amazing that a man who drinks two beers can rant and rave for 72 minutes. Yes, but you can do that without two I beers. can talk to peeling wallpaper for five <laughs> minutes at least and everything. You guys take care. Have a good weekend. Thanks for joining me. Nobody deserves success more than you. Focus on sales and persuasion. And we got a free book for anybody. Goes to McClaudDiamond.com. This is uh, my first book. Did I write this book in 2001? It's in there. I, I know. But go to the front. I don't know. I don't believe what I write, though. No. I know. No, no, it no. It says when, 2001. Yes. Well, then that's when you did it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, guess who edited it? Yes, you did. You, you were my editor. Right. Absolutely. So listen, <laughs> um, go to my, go there, get the free book. Have a great, we're safe weekend. It's the weekend. It's Friday. Well, we can't go out to restaurants. We can't party or anything like that, but. At least I can go out and take my run every day. Take care, guys. Be good. Bye, See ya. Good weekend. Bye, Peace Sean. Bye, Sean.